What's up, everybody? It's Roger and Victor here, Fun of this Kingdom podcast. On this episode, we're going to be talking about Pandora, or more particularly, Victoria is going to be telling us about her thoughts of Pandora. Um, I believe you finally got around to going over to the new attraction over in um, Animal Kingdom and Walt Disney World. So, what was your initial impressions? I was in awe of everything. It was very surreal. It was honestly worth all the years that I waited to go see it. <laughs> So it definitely. Um, so, so did you do both both attractions? I um, I didn't do Navi River Journey just because it was one on one. Yeah, that was the only reason. But I did ride um, Flight of Passage. Yeah. So, what was that experience like? It was honestly nothing like I've ever ridden before. It's, I mean, it in a way it's soaring, but it's more of a four D experience. Like you're experiencing sounds and smells and. Mm touch and it's like it's really all your senses being worked at once and it's, it's just an amazing ride I honestly would I don't know if I would wait five hours for it but it was definitely worth riding yeah I mean I sometimes feel like a lot of the, the queues at the minute it's just because it is so new and everyone wants to do it and obviously you know you've even got like regulars going it's also the summer and all the rest of it but um so the actual sort of how long is it, is it about two three minutes is it a bit longer than that um I would say the whole experience, including, you know, the setup for the story and everything, mm-hmm. I would say altogether five minutes because right, we, yeah. you go into one room and they have you stand on a specific number and there's someone explaining, to, oh, spoiler alert for anybody, yeah. it shouldn't be by now, but but um, you're basically linked to an avatar. Mm. So they, they do a DNA matching process and all that whatnot, hoopla, and then they send you into a second room. And they're basically telling you the safety video. Yeah. The third route is when you actually go in and ride the Banshee. Mm-hmm. And then that's it. So you're going in three different routes, but it all yeah. sets up for an awesome story. So, so does the Banshee actually move, go up? Because, um, or is it just, does it stay where it is? I mean, I know it moves around a little bit, but um, does it actually, like, because I always kind of think, like, is it like, um, like the, the old Back to the Future, the, the Simpsons ride, where it kind of raises up? And then you're in a big room, or is it um, just what you can see in, in front of you? Um, it's a kind of a combination of both. So it's a big screen, like you. It's like the screen lifts up. It's a big screen, but with the banshee, mm. um, you're riding it like a horse, and you can actually feel the banshee like breathing, mm. like by your leg. It's it's yeah. really cool. I loved it. So was there any, because obviously we've been hearing lots of issues with like size, um, people getting issues with like it being claustrophobic on the back of their legs. Was there any, how did you feel on it? Um, I can definitely see the issue for bigger people because what happens is they have you sit like all the way to the very front of the vehicle mm. and something comes and um, it basically closes you in on your back so that way you're yeah. secure so i can understand the claustrophobia aspect and i do like yeah if you're a bigger person like if you're like my dad's size probably mm. then it might be a little uncomfortable yeah because that's, that's kind of issue because i have um big thighs because i walk on my front of my feet so therefore you tend to end up with bigger calves um right so that's that kind of a whole thing, but you didn't experience any of that yourself, and you didn't see anybody else in the party or in that room have the same issue. Um, no, we that, the only real issue we had was like because I have glasses, it was just keeping my glasses on top of another pair of glasses. So yeah, yeah. Um, as someone um, that whole three D <coughs> thing, um, as a, someone that does wear glasses. 3D is not the most comfortablest thing when you do have to wear, you know, would you wear, you know, the idea of having to wear two pairs of glasses. Um, it's why I don't go see 3D movies at the cinema, basically, unless that's the only ch- way I can see it. Um, I try to avoid 3D movies at all costs. But usually if you're on a couple of minute ride, your eyes don't sensitize quickly enough to, I don't know if it's, there is something about us where I think we're wearing glasses that 3D is not quite the most amazing thing. That might be why it didn't quite take off at home either. Yeah, I would agree because we ended up before even the ride started just taking our glasses off because they just weren't staying and the ride's kind of, in a way, it's like the intense side of yeah. mission space. So it's kind of moving a lot. So I just didn't want my glasses to fall. So I just took them mm. off altogether. But I mean, it was definitely a really great ride. It's mm. worth 
trying out for sure. So did if you took the 3D glasses off, did it affect it too much? Because I know when I've done it in an EP cap just to see what was going on, and it's all a bit blurry. Um, not really. It was more so like a lot of stuff was happening in the beginning at first. Mm-hmm. My eyes were trying to focus, but once they did, it, there wasn't any issue. No, no, that's right then. Because that's always, I think, some of the issues I found when like seeing cinema movies and stuff. Because obviously when Avatar came out, you know, I remember going and seeing it in, with the 3D glasses because that was kind of the big thing about how great it was. Since then, everything's kind of died off a little bit. It's kind of that fad has come off. But obviously, attractions, it's always that been thing for me of like 3D glasses. That always was about being at the parks. That you know, going back to you know Muppet Vision and you know, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, you know, and Terminator Two. 3D glasses were always something I expected from this. I know when I went to cinema, I was always expecting that kind of like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never got that kind of feeling that you did um, at the attractions. But it's cool to just be coming in there. Um, what's the actual? Did you go into the like the the merchandise shop? Was that kind of did have anything left in it? I did. I went to Wind Traders. I ate at Satsuli Canteen, and I did try the Pongu Pongu. Oh, those um, those little ball things, aren't they? Yeah, like um, my I was with some Filipino friends of mine, and they told me it was actually boba, which I've never had before, but it was really delicious. Like I loved it. They just look like little calippo shot things, little ice creams that we have here. Um, but yeah, so the food was was nice. That was good. Yeah, me and my friends basically got different things so we can try mm-hmm. all the things. Um, one friend got a, ri- a rice bowl with chicken. Another friend got a rice roll with beef. Both were very good. They, every, I think every meal came with a side of vegetable chips, which was mm. good. I've never had those before, but they were delicious. My Some, friend... Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to oh, say, sorry. sometimes it's that thing that I know when I'm at then part... Anything that just doesn't come with fries or a burger is just really nice just to have something different. So right rice and chicken and sort of special chips do sound quite cool. Yeah, it was it was like it was sort of like Chipotle in a way. Mm. But like a more healthier Chipotle, which I like. The cheesecake, um I would say I guess it's Instagram pretty, but it's not really worth the <laughs> hype. We we all agree. We were like we were sitting there for a second, like I I don't get what it is. It's good, but it's not that good. I love that. Just, oh, it's Instagram pretty, and it's just that thing of like you know that whole thing of like taking food pictures and stuff is like I'm probably that little bit older now where I I have to be really good to kind of take a picture of it. it's like it's like yeah Instagram. <laughs> um. So overall, would you say the food was sort of worth it, or did it um not you know, or was it just a couple of little themed things because I'm sure they eat lots of cheesecakes on Pandora. Um, honestly, I think the food was worth it. I would definitely eat there again. It was very everything was cooked to very well. Drinks were great. I liked it a lot. It was something different too. So I mean, I feel like it's worth it. Cool. And uh, the merchandise? Did you go in and have a look at the new merchandise store? I did. I did take a look around. Um, when you exit Flight of Passage, it leads you into Wind Traders. Of course. So we, you have to do that. It has to right, do that. It's, like, <laughs> it's the law. It's like, is, is, it, is it really, did you really do a Disney attraction without going through the gift shop at the end? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was really nice. I liked it. Um, when you walk in on the first night, you can, you know, make your own Avatar figurine. And then when you walk through, I mean, you saw nothing Mickey Mouse, which I liked. Yeah. It very stuck true to the theme. You could have, you would kind of feel like there should be a blue Mickey Mouse in there, like a kind of an avatar version of him. I feel like it's coming. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I was in there, I did see some people like asking cast members if there was like any Mickey Mouse stuff in there. So I feel like if enough yes ask, they'll break down and do it. Yeah, it's there was. Kind of, um, yeah, it's that kind of no weird banshee. Thing. No, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. They've been very hot. <laughs> Yeah, no, no banshee. <laughs> it's that kind of thing as well of like, as much as they want to have this experience, you know, the general public will buy what it likes. And sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, while the Imagineers and everyone's like, no, you're in a special little zone. Like everybody else, no, we're in, we're in Mickey Mouse's house. This is just his garden. And, uh, you know, anything, you know, they want that kind of experience. And, oh, yeah, we're in Disney. And that's, you know, it's just, it's just you're, it doesn't fit. But what about the actual, like, the co- area you know the, the walking around it is it as big and as massive as they as it looks yes i mean most of the time i was looking up because like just the floating islands themselves they're like they're massive and surreal i was just looking around like well 
we went in when it was like close to sunset. Yeah. So it was really nice to see everything during sunset. And when we came out of flight of passage, it was not it was dark. So it, we got to see the bioluminescence of the plant life, which was equally gorgeous. Yeah. It was it was just amazing. Because it almost just feel like that thing, like you've kind of got to go twice during the day and during the night to kind of fully experience it. But you're almost better going during the day to see it and then comparing it to night. If you go night first, you might not quite grasp how what everything is. Yeah, that's why we went around um, like 7.30ish. So that way we still got to see everything in the daytime. But once we came out the ride, we got to see everything at night as well. Mm. That's cool. it, was, it, was, yeah. it was really cool. Yeah, so I mean, at least like, like next time you go, we can go do the river river journey. I mean, at the minute, it's that kind of right bad thing, really. Of like, if you're going like this summer and you've got these two attractions and you've got you've got the day at you know, at that park, you know, couple you know a few hours on each attraction is gonna be um it's gonna really suck up your time. But kind of in terms of theme sizes, how big kind of compared to maybe some of the other lands in Walt Disney World does it compare to? Oh. Um, wow, that's a good question. I mean, I guess in terms of size, I would say it's a little bit bigger than Fantasyland. Well, Fantasyland's quite big, especially you now with the, like, the new expansion area there and stuff. So that's, that's that's pretty good. And I suppose they kind of hide all of all the trees and the rocks and the floating mountains and stuff. Yeah, that's including all the all the environment as well. So, yeah, it's it's massive. There's so much you can explore. They have a lot of entertainment there too. I'm honestly very impressed with it. Mm. It definitely feels like it's been one of those things that everyone's been like, eh, it's Avatar, whatever. What, it's, we don't care about Avatar. It's not Disney. It's a franchise nobody cares about. Whatever. It's taken years. We've been seeing it built for ages. And now it's open and everyone is like, no, it is really good and it's great. You know, there has been... That whole zone now is going now. We're a month on from opening. You know, in some way, maybe some of the buzz has sort of gone off from the idea of, you know, now it's open and it's running. Um, but I just feel like it just it just sounds like it's just been a massive improvement for the the whole park. No, absolutely. I, I mean, I, like a lot of deck is still busy. Like I feel because of Pandora. Like we went around Animal Kingdom first, and the lines were still pretty pretty long. I mean, we had yeah. fast pass, but they were still pretty long, but I think it's honestly because of Pandora. Yeah. And also, the thing is, as well, is I can't help but feel like if I was going, say I was going to uh, um, Animal Kingdom tomorrow, you know, I'd be trying to get my my free fast passes for the two new um, Avatar attractions, and therefore it would mean that I'm not using them maybe up for the other attractions in the park, so that kind of spreads out the queue a little bit more that way. Yeah, I can see that as well. Mm. But no, so it definitely sounds like you had, you know, it was a great experience, and I'm guessing you're going to be going back quite a bit over the over the coming months. Yeah, I'll definitely be going back soon, just mainly because I was hoping to get a banshee, because I had a friend tell me they were back, but by the time I got there, they were gone. So I just got me like a little plush banshee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think that'd be one of those situations of once the kind of the, the hoopla dies down and they get supplied sorted, and like like with most kind of collectible things it's all about that initial rush and also if people see them going for more on ebay or on facebook groups then that makes them buy them because they can fl flip them to make a profit and it's just a it takes a while sometimes until there's a load of them constantly till that kind of disappears oh absolutely yeah absolutely but, yeah but anything else you want to add on pandora um try the pongu pongu drinks they're great they have non-alcoholic and alcoholic. I got the Night Blossom, and it was delicious. So I'd highly recommend you try there, too. That sounds good. If anyone else wants to know or got any comments about Pandora over at Animal Kingdom, let us know in the comments below. You can get in touch with us through all the different social medias, including um, Facebook and Twitter. You can also find us over at thiskingdom.com. Remember to hit that subscribe button on this YouTube channel, as I said in the past couple of months. Um, kind of set up as this is a separate one for all like our parks kind of things so definitely want to hit that subscribe button and victoria where can they find you they can find me on twitter and he calls me pp and instagram he calls me pineapple princess and on that note guys thank you very much for watching see you guys soon laters bye